where they can try and screw up people's fun, because they will. Yes, well, it's not a good idea to drink and drive. No, no, it's definitely not a good idea to drink and drive, but, I mean, suppose you go out and you have one beer. You're not drunk, but they're still going to fuck with you if you did. Yes. Yes, so be careful of those assholes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one drink is usually more than one shot, too. Uh, I, I, I imagine it depends on uh, where you, who's making your drinks. Yeah. Cause I think, I think, uh, yeah, a jigger, a jigger and a half is a, kind of a standard for a single, single, single mixed drink. Yeah. Anyway, don't do it. You'd be a fool to do it. <laughs> do what? To, to, to drink and drive. Oh, yes. Don't do it. That's... Ah. Well, oh, Scon yeah. Scotty's a special special state. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What a week. No, it's... So we're just... We're just, we're just uh, easing our way out of the uh, geomagnetic storm. Yes, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's been the brain damage for me. <laughs> but, yeah. but, it, but it's kind of fading down now, so that, that's a good thing. That's good. Yep, 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 yep. And, uh, let's see, uh, what else, what else, what else, what else, what, what's going on in your world? Same old, same old. Yeah. Now, um, when what day is the boy's birthday? May seventeen. May seventeen. All right, so you got about two months until they're until they are adults. Yeah. <laughs> wow, won't that be something? Insane. And then about three months until they're graduated. What? The graduation is May thirty first. Oh, so two and a half months. Yep. All right. That's all right. Okay, I thought we thought those were in June. Well, yeah, usually it's the first week in June, June second and third. May thirty first is the last day of the month. Uh, all right. All right. May well. <laughs> Then they'll have to have two separate parties, one for their birthday and one for their graduation. Yeah. Um, we don't have parties for the birthday parties. What's that again? We don't have birthday parties for them. You, maybe not, but they do. I mean, they're turning 18. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be partying with their friends or something. They'll be... No, they won't. I'm telling you, they don't do that. But they're turning 18. It's like a it's like a landmark. They aren't going to be partying, I guarantee you. <laughs> That's possible, Kate. <laughs> the denial of motherhood. No, I'm not. No, I would. No, I am not. <laughs> Trust me, I am not. <laughs> one's got a girlfriend, doesn't have a lot of friends he hangs out with, and one is a non-sociable kid, like completely non-social. I, I, I can relate. Plays, uh, vi plays video games and is content to do just that. Doesn't want to be around people. Yeah, no, I, I totally relate to that. Not sociable at all. Does not go to parties. All right, all right. I'm just saying. I, I believe you. I would know. Yeah. I would fucking know if they did. Trust me, I know I would. <laughs> All right. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why, but they just don't do that. They don't drink. Don't well, do drugs. Well, I, you know, that doesn't mean you can't have a party just because you don't do drinks and drugs. I don't. I don't know right? what. I don't. I don't know what else it is. A party is. A party is fucking drinking and, and doing drugs. Well, yeah. I, I don't. I don't really know what else it could be, but. 
I said I, I don't know what else it could be, but I know people have parties without without uh, uh, whatever they call parties that they, they don't get high. What, what are you doing? Just stand around and talk to each other? I don't know, Chip. <laughs> Eat chips and uh, I, I, if I know, <laughs> I never went to those parties. <laughs> but those are not the parties I went to. What? I said, said those are not the parties I went to. Oh, me either. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Like people, church groups have parties, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I don't think they're doing drinking or drugging. A church group. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the hell they do. I don't know the extent of everything, no. But I know that if they were doing that, I would know. Okay. Well, yeah. Your your office has parties, right? Yeah. Okay, well, what do they do? We had a baby shower this week for a girl that's pregnant at work. Okay, so you, but so there's there's no drinking going on there, right? Not at that party, no. Okay. But at the Christmas party, there's drinking. Well, that's different. You know. <laughs> it's, a, it's at a bar. Get that duck. <laughs> That's where the party is at. All right. Well, then that makes sense. It's for my department. Okay. Well, yeah. anyway, uh, I, 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 well, okay. They're, they're not. They're not gonna have parties. All right. They might. I mean, you know. Yeah. We usually go. Uh, I usually just take them out to dinner somewhere. Been doing. Oh, okay. Been doing. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's going to be a change, you know. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, oh, I am. Now, I am. Now, I am. now, are they going to take a year off? Are they going to go straight to college? Or? Well, the plan is to go straight to college. We'll see if that actually happens. All right. That remains to be seen. That's the plan right now. It's been a long time coming. What? So it's been a long time coming. Yeah. It's gone fast, though. I mean, when you're in the midst of doing it, you think time goes slow, but then... It's gone fast. I remember uh, it, it doesn't seem very long ago that we started talking, but they were like little kids. They were yeah. like eight years old, I think, when I when I first right. talked to you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff, man. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's wild. It's wild. Anyway, let's kick it off with some jams here, and uh, we'll come back and talk about stuff. Plenty of stuff to talk about. There's tons of stuff. We never run out of content. And not that kind of stuff, because I, I don't care about what's politics, who got fired, and who got. Yeah, but, we're but not thanks, talking. But thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Can't keep up. It's a revolving door. Exactly. <laughs> I, 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 think, I see these names flying by. I was like, who? Who are these people? <laughs> I know. I know. I know. There, somebody knows who they are, and I've seen the name on on the Twitter and stuff. But uh, yeah, hey, whatever. Anyway, since uh, tomorrow is uh, Saint Patty's Day. Yeah. And that's an Irish thing. We're going to start off with an Irish song. Not Good. not a St. Patty's Day song, but a song by an Irish band. All right. <laughs> Sex and drugs in rock and roll. <laughs> That's Ian Dury and the Blockheads there from 1977. Sex and drugs and rock and roll. Before that was rancid with Red Hot Moon. And we kicked it off with Stiff Little Fingers doing Roots, Radicals, Rockers, and Reggae from back in 1981. Great stuff, huh? Musa? Musa, Musa, Musa. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you're 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 kind of you're kind of low there. You got your micro my microphone <laughs> microphone moved up to the top of your head or something. That was way up there. It's like okay, that's not going to work. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, uh, what, 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 what do you know? What kind of, what kind of stuff do you know about? Oh. Um, I can't talk about this right now because I really didn't do the research, but I don't have a picture of the ordinance to... Um, ordinance? They wanted to do an ordinance. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. They wanted to put a city ordinance in place for a public good ordinance. And, okay, the existing ordinance, ordinance, okay, wait, wait. Sorry, Graham. I can't do this right now. Uh, I, it's, it's uh, all right. No problem. Thing nope. I have to delve into, and I didn't. Have, no. I haven't done it. All right. No problem. So no sorry problem. Sorry for the silence. I, I was thought I could find something quick on it, but really, I, I need to have to be able to see the thing. And all right. Well, well that's 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 no problem. Um, anyway, besides that, I know that a bridge collapsed. A bridge collapsed. And. Why this happened, and then I was thinking about this today. I'm thinking, while well, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm thinking, why, if they were going to, if it was a test, why didn't they stop traffic? Like, block the road for a few minutes while you test this bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, at least, you know, because if it's a test, they don't know, why, are you testing it and there's live traffic going underneath it? How dumb. Uh, right. No, it was totally stupid. Totally, to totally, totally this crazy. This should not have happened. This, this should not have fucking happened. I mean, if you're going to test something, you close the road. I mean, even in this link here, you see a picture of the road closed before, what, you, you know, have... while they were installing it. They only installed it on Saturday, last Saturday. Right. And in six hours, they installed this span, this part of it. And it was this new, just this section, one section of it that they installed, but, um, really? Yeah, just, just total, um, incompetence and ignorance and, uh... Just dumb. Just, just so uh, dumb. If you're going to test it, you don't do it while there's live traffic going underneath you. Well, that's government for you. I mean, you didn't think to block the road off, like, or do it at midnight, you know, and then block the road off, because there's not as many, you know, cars, and it's easier to block the road. I mean, someone's head's going to roll because of this. Well, you would hope so. More than one person's head should roll over this, because oh, yeah. of this thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was, what, six deaths I saw, or maybe it was ten? But uh, I've seen numbers from four to ten. <laughs> And we're supposed to trust the government. You know what I mean? I, we're supposed to trust. Uh, and it's just like, I do not trust. It, that doesn't exist in my vocabulary. The same, it can't exist in the same sentence. That article, you, government. That you, article you posted said it crushed eight cars and killed six people. Yeah. I mean, there was one kid, and he was riding with his friend, the girl, a lady. You know, they were 19. They're college students. And it collapsed on her side, so but he was able to get out and stay up. They, last I heard, they didn't find her. They probably found her by now, but uh, I can't even imagine that. Driving along, driving along, boom. You know what I mean? Right. Well, yes. Kate, Kate has pointed out in, in the uh, chat over the last day or so yes. that uh, this same company has been responsible or has been part of other uh, bridges that have been... Right, like the 35. I saw the uh, I-35. And, and uh, oh, that bridge that collapsed there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
Now that, that's, I mean, that's not the uh, the uh, Point Pleasant one. No, but this one says it may have skipped the se the usual sequence. Well, they're just looking for excuses. They don't really fucking know. <laughs> All I know is people shouldn't have died. It might have collapsed, but they're testing it. So you, if you're going to be testing something, you do it when there's no traffic going underneath of it. Right, absolutely. I mean, you block off the road. Something. I mean, it, 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 it collapsed. They would have been able to tell, obviously, it collapsed immediately when they did whatever test they did on it. Right. You know, it's like it, it, it took a matter of minutes. You mean you couldn't close the road down? Exactly. Um, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes? Sure. Whatever? Yeah, no, right. I mean, come on. I know, I know. It's ridiculous. It's insanity. Someone's head has to roll on this. I'm just saying, I was right with that Olympics thing. When that all went down, many heads rolled. Many, many heads rolled. The whole freaking uh, ISOC resigned, or whatever it was. Yeah. International Olympic Committee resigned. They were forced to. Well, they should. For all that. Yep. We we didn't really do a follow-up on that, but I just, a little bit we did, but. Yeah, man, heads rolled. And heads should roll on this one. I mean, someone's got to be freaking accountable. You know, and it's just, it's, it's ridiculous, and I'm so tired of corporations and you know, getting the vaccine makers or not? There's no accountability. They can injure you and kill you, and then it's, oh well. That's the, you know, no biggie. Exactly. It's not going to affect us in any way. Yeah. You know, it's like, are you kidding me? Uh, apparently you know, not. Apparently not. You yeah. can't test a bridge with live traffic going underneath it. That's just ridiculous. You would think so. <laughs> you would think they they would know better than to do that, but um, it's, 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 it's the government. Ignorant. That's that's how government works. They don't they don't you know they just they just do whatever the hell they please. Yeah, they don't like sink into the future of what their actions what can happen. You know what I mean? Right. It's just they're just like oh we're doing this right now. You know, it's like, whatever. Yeah. They just do whatever. I mean, it's just proof to me, like, that, you know, people still stand by the Constitution or whatever, but it's basically been, it's been desecrated. They don't, it's not been followed, truly, if it's meant to be real in the first place. Yeah. And yeah. even if we... If people raise a stink and say, no, we don't want this. They do it anyway. They do what they do because they're on an agenda and they don't listen to people. They don't care about the fucking people. And I say they, but I should say it. Because I'm talking about government as a whole. I'm not talking about any individual person. I'm talking about the government. What I call it. It's not a person. Exactly. Does not have fucking feelings. People, people like collude that line. They don't think about it. You know, we. And I'm guilty of it myself. I'm like they, 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 they. What is they? Who is they? They is the government. The government is a thing. The government is not a person or a group of people. It's a thing. It's a thing. Government is a thing. A thing does not have feelings. <laughs> Thing doesn't give a shit for about you. No, they do not. <laughs> it does not. It does, it does not. not give a fuck about you. <laughs> Government does not give a fuck about you. No, no, they don't. As soon as you get that wrapped around your mind, you'll see. Like it's like as soon as really that sinks in, then like it's weird because it's like the blinders start getting lifted a little bit, and you start seeing things, and you start realizing that yeah. It's true. They don't fucking get the government. It does not give a fuck about me. Or anybody else for that matter. No. Doesn't give a fuck really for any living thing. 
And nor do the people that work for it. Think about it. It doesn't give a shit about any living thing. You know why I know that? I know that because it doesn't give a shit about plants. Doesn't give a fuck about people. Doesn't give a fuck about animals. Doesn't give a fuck about the environment. No fucks are given. given. What? No fucks are given. No fucks are given. True. <laughs> so think about that. Think about and that. You'll realize. You'll see. You'll start to see even more and more and more. Right. About how this is true. And you'll understand why a thing like that down in Miami could have happened when, because they're freaking morons. <laughs> right. <laughs> They don't, they have, it's like, what Brainiac is running that show, what Brainiac decided to test that bridge. <laughs> Crap. Loud and clear. Great. Oh, I'm loud. Wonderful. <laughs> Mostly loud. <laughs> well, I'm going to be participating when you call in because... Yeah. 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 It's, it's still, yeah. It still won't come through the phone. Anyway, uh, I, I want to do a, a little uh, follow up on a story we did some time ago. All right. Uh, you, you remember the the nurse in Utah, and the pig came in, and and, uh, and the pig wanted wanted the nurse to take blood so that the yeah the, the pig could do some bad stuff to him, and the nurse said yep. no, and then the cop beat her up. Yes. Remember that story? Okay. Yes. Well, now cops have to get a warrant now that the Nurse Wubbles bill is signed into law. So police in Utah have to get a warrant if they want to draw blood from an unconscious Good. patient. Utah Governor Gary Herbert signed House Bill 43 into law today. It requires pigs to go to court for a warrant to do a blood draw unless a patient gives consent, which means if they're unconscious, they're not giving consent. Um... <laughs> so the bill uh, was run in response to the situation involving the University of Utah Hospital at nurse Alex Wubbles, who refused to allow the Salt Lake City pig asses uh, to draw blood from the unconscious patient without a warrant, right. uh, because she demanded he comply with existing policy, which was hospital policy. The pig grabbed her and arrested her in an incident that was captured on police body cams and generated international headlines. He would just grab her and arrest her. He beat the fuck out of her. Anyway, right. the officer involved was ultimately fired. Good. And Wubbles reached a settlement with the Salt Lake City Department. Uh, didn't say what how much she got here, but uh, she got something well, in. And they got a new law out of it. So, um, good. I mean, not that I'm for a good new law, but I mean, I'm glad that that lady stood up, stood her ground there and um, you know, realized what they were doing was wrong. Right, exactly. You know. Yeah, no, she, she she did the right thing. Uh, cop did absolutely the wrong thing, but that's what cops right. do is absolutely the wrong thing at all times. <laughs> well, and they get away with it. Slim Jim Slim, I am not. I don't have my Skype open yet. I told you I'm not ready for you yet, and my name well, on there is not did. Grim. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you say that, but. My, my name on there is not Grimnair, it's Grimnair 9, which I pointed out earlier. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not ready yet. Yeah, yeah you'll be, so I'll be here all night too. Um, <laughs> be, 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 make sure to tip your, your waitresses. <laughs> Bartenders and waitresses. Yeah, absolutely. This is me, so I have to tip myself tonight. <laughs> which is fine. I deserve it. Yeah. I deserve a tip. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh god crazy stuff I mean I don't know it's just like like I said I was thinking about that when I was brushing my teeth weird shit comes to me at weird times you know? bridge thing but anyway um I don't know what else well I, I want I want you to tell me what you think of this here it's a okay. totally right. diff totally different story alright Tell me what you think of it. Nun drops dead after asking Katy Perry not to buy her convent. What? <laughs> I'm 
telling you what it's saying. This, this is bizarre now. Okay. What now? Uh, this isn't real. Is this uh, real? It is, no, it is real. A nun, Are you sure? A nun, nun, nun pleads with pop star moments before her death. Katy Perry, please stop. And then it says the nun collapsed and died on Friday, last Friday, just moments after pleading with pop star Katy Perry not to buy her convent. 86-year-old sister Catherine Rose Holzman was at the center of a court battle in which she was trying to block Perry from buying a via the sisters had owned for 40 years. As she probably she, had a heart attack. As, as she walked into the courtroom, does it say how old she was here? 86, yes, yeah, she could have. Anyway, as she walked into the courtroom, Sister Holzman turned to a camera for Fox 11 News in Los Angeles and said, Katy Perry, please stop. She was pleading with the singer to stop trying to buy the sisters of Immaculate Heart of Mary's Convent, forcing nuns to go to court to block the sale. It's not doing anyone any good, Holzman added before walking into the courtroom where she collapsed and died just minutes later. <laughs> wow. Now, now we all know that, that Katy Perry is, is one of those Illuminati women. Yes, yes, she is. <laughs> no denying that one. Yeah. <laughs> and they've got a they've got a picture of her here in the article, uh, holding up like the devil sign, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, the Illuminati sign. <laughs> oh yeah. So, 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 Katy Perry didn't like this this old nun and, and willed her to die. <laughs> Apparently, I wouldn't doubt that actually. <laughs> it says Wapo reports the sisters have owned the sprawling Roman via style convent for 40 years uh, only a small handful of nuns were still alive when they vacated the complex several years ago as the diocese looked for someone to buy it well, they, they weren't living there still so well uh, whatever they didn't want this devil worshipper in there apparently right which I don't blame them I, I, I mean I, can, I get it they don't want, you know, that was their home. They don't want that moving in there. Like, really? That? Really? I get it. So, I wouldn't want Katy Perry. Perry. <laughs> I would not want that. That would be bad. Nasty. Anyway, that, that someone that decided to buy it was Perry, known for I Kissed a Girl and This Dress, among other things. The nuns did not approve. <laughs> I'm sure not. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, you better have him call in now. He's. Uh, I'm going to play another set before he calls in. Oh, okay. Well, then that'll give him time to beat off. Uh, I, I don't see. That's not information I require. Keep that. Well, it's in the chat. I I'm see. Sorry. I see. I, no, I see me. that. I see that there. So. <laughs> just, just, just slim, really. Yeah. We don't need to know that, man. That, that, Why would you talk about that? That is, as they say, TMI. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very TMI. Yes. We don't even give a shit. All right. Well, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do our uh, official uh, yeah. St. Patty's Day set here. All right, let's do that. Oh, yeah. awesome. I was wondering if you were going to do that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, we always do. I'm like, there better be... No, I didn't say that. So I'm we'll, glad that you did that. Yeah, we'll, thank you. We'll, we'll start off with a little slug and molly. All right. Oh, yeah. I love right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy St. Patty's Day to you all out there. That... Uh, Last track there was Barrels of Whiskey, Barrels of Whiskey, uh, by uh, the O'Reilly's and the Patty Hats. Before that, we had the Rum Jacks doing an Irish pub song, and we kicked it off with Sloggin' Molly and Drunken Lullabies. Uh, I tell you, man, I, it, it's, it's great music. Uh, Moose Girl was definitely agreeing with that in there in the chat. Um <laughs> Oh man, I just, uh, just yeah, I just can't give enough of that stuff. Uh, Crap, I unmuted. You're good. You're good. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we just do you know, a few drinking songs there for. Uh, I like those songs. For your, for your, for your, for your what, what the hell is that? For your pre St. Patty's Day um, warm up, I guess. Yes, warm up. <laughs> 
And, uh, you know, it's, 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 I, I don't know. I thought it was a green beer, though. I don't need to drink no beer that's got some coloring in it. It, like, it, it makes it warmer. It rips it. It's like, big, slippin' deal. You're drinking green beer. It, it's just a, it should, that fad should go away. You uh, shouldn't I, even do it in Chicago anymore with the frickin' river. Don't make the river fucking green, dumbass. It, it, you know, really, come on. <laughs> Jeans wear mentally. I mean, even though it's food grade, food coloring, you know, whatever, it's still really. Uh, right, right. What's the point? Come on, people. You have to go that freaking far. Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, come on. Drink some green beer if you want your piss to be green, whatever, or blue. Um, and it just wrecks the beer. I'm just saying. Don't put food color in your beer. It, it, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a big deal to drink green beer. It's just food coloring. It's just dye, people. All right, better get the uh, the Skype on here before uh, Slim okay, Jim yeah. bursts a corpuscle over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's see what let's see what Slim Jim's got to say. Well, I've always had backup, dude. Well, let's see what Slim Jim's got to say over there. By the way. Oh, look at that. We can put them up. We can put them up on camera. <laughs> oh my God! Slim Jim Flim. Okay, I'm muting because I can't respond anyway, and I won't be able to hear unless I use my mic. Hello. And yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Can you hear me, Jim Flim Flim? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Good. That's good. Um, All right. Good. Okay. Well, um, you're you're a little echoey there. Are you not on a headset? No, I'm on a, on a headset. Uh, each by uh, a sound. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Well, talk rather than type. How, how, how's that? Uh, uh, testing one, two. Yeah, you're three. you're all right. You're okay. You're fine. Good. Uh, yeah, Good. yeah, yeah. So so tell me what's going on in the land of New Hampshire. Yes, sir. So, uh, oh my gosh, uh, different things. So, well, uh, well, I mean, we've got this uh, income tax bill going. Everybody near me. I, this, this is a good, good sound check, right? Yeah, no, you, you sound fine. I mean, it's not yeah. great, but it's fine. All right. Yeah. So there's this. Uh, there's HB. Uh, yeah, we don't care. Well, what's it about? Income tax. Well, what about and it? What about income so, tax? So, for as long as, as long as I've been here, there has been <clears throat> no state income tax in New Hampshire, and uh, I mean, that's one of the main reasons why why I want why I live here. Okay. And, yeah, and so. It's not a big deal, really, but uh, freaking the Democrats, they're, and they're trying to pass this other bill on HB 26, I think it's HB, I can't even see my notes right now. I got, uh, I we notes. don't care about the numbers, so we just want to know what it's about. They're, they're trying to pass this shit, and, it, you know, it, it, the, the idea of, of the bill is that it would, I don't know, it's supposed to, they want to pay for... Different shit for. They want to steal your money. That's what they want. They want to steal your money. Yeah. They want to steal your money, and <laughs> currently they're 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 not. <laughs> well, so, not, not, not they're not, not taking that part of it. They steal it other ways. I mean, I mean, I mean they, they, yeah, they, they steal other ways, but I mean, like this part of it, they're, they're not stealing, and it fucking pissed me off when I when I heard about this bill. It fucking pissed me off. And so I made signs. Like nobody, or I'm sorry, only one other guy, one other guy from Portrait, uh came out 
on the streets of Manchester, New Hampshire. And he protested with me. But it, he, he was barely even out there. And so, I just kept going. So you, you, like, you were the one man, one man protester. Pretty much. You, you, were, like, you were the crazy <laughs> dude, crazy yep. dude on the street. Yep. Yep. Like three days. <laughs> he was there for a little bit, but like, I was pretty much that guy. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. And and now, now so, t- tell me this, tell me this. Do you, do you remember do you remember the song Alice's Restaurant? Uh, sounds familiar, but not. Uh, not Ar- Ar- Arlo Arlo Guthrie, Alice's Restaurant. Don't don't break into song right now. No, I'm not gonna. I'm just telling you. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, anyway, it was it was a it was a, it was a great song. It's a historical song. I mean, just, play anyway. it later. It's it's all right. Play it later. I, I'm, no, I'm not gonna play it. It's it's like 18 uh, minutes long. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> anyway, twenty five years later, he did uh, Al- Alice's Restaurant revisited the massacre. Who? Who? Arlo Guthrie. Uh, okay. You know Arlo Guthrie? Not, not really. No. He's a he's an old no. folk singer. Right. <laughs> Good enough. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> and part of, part of the song, and he's talking about it later. And he says, imagine walking into a building somewhere and humming a few bars of Alice's Restaurant. And and yeah. if you go in there and you're just one guy, they're going to think you're nuts. But say mm-hmm. two or three of you go in there and do it, they're, they're going to yeah. think something, something might be suspicious. And then if there's <laughs> like a whole group of you going in there, they're thinking there's a movement going on. <laughs> See, the thing is out so here... So, you're the one guy. You're the one guy going in and humming at Alice's restaurant. I know, I know. <laughs> like, like that, that night, I was the one guy, and that's fine. But the thing is that... Think of it from the cops' perspective. Think of it from the feds' fucking perspective. They've seen us out there so many fucking times. And they know who, they, they know who I am. <laughs> and they know who my friends are. They they know that like in like, ten seconds I pull out my phone. If it's a big deal, thirty other people are out there. Thirty. Good. Then you got a movement going on. Then you got something going. I, I'm not I'm not bullshitting. Like I mean, <laughs> it might it might take a little yeah. You know, we're in freaking anarchy standard time and shit. But yeah, l- let me continue my story if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> so. Oh, uh, this is it's actually a pretty good story. So, um I'm hanging out downtown day one, day two, day three, blah blah blah. One guy shows up, one of my friends for portrait, he shows up. And I'm I'm definitely I'm, I'm not trying to compete portrait is not like well, yeah, it, it's competition, but it's it's like we can, we can be friends. Um <laughs> but one guy from Port Chet shows up. And, um, do you know what, I would imagine you know what Liberty Form is? The Reform? Liberty, Liberty Forum? Liberty Forum, yeah, I know what Liberty Forum is. Alright, so, like, I, that, that was, like, about the same time, downtown Manchester, and, like, some of these fucking, Asshole pissed me off, and so I was like, eh, "I'm not gonna pay for, it. I'm not gonna pay for the tickets." Right now. So I, <laughs> I'm me, and so I got in to limited parts of it anyway. <laughs> but the fun part was <laughs> when it first started. I was out there. I had my freaking uh, cardboard. I had my cardboard <laughs> sign out there, just like walking in front of. All these, all these guys, like, just, you know, for training. First and foremost, for training, because that way the next time something like this happens here or wherever else, you know, they, they've seen how I did it, and that I didn't get. I well, didn't, I didn't, tell, I didn't tell me this. Tell, tell me this. What, what, what did, what did it say on your sign? Uh. What did it say? It said, um, no New Hampshire income tax, I believe. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it said. It said no New Hampshire, and that's what I was chanting as well. I was like, no New Hampshire income tax, not in my state, not in your state, not in the Grant state. You know. <laughs> Okay, and and were there was, was there traffic on the road or anything? Oh hell yeah! This and is... and you get, did you get people to honk and wave oh, yeah. and, <laughs> and, and make it make it so that I mean uh, definitely your, your one man protest. Uh, it wasn't just me. Like there, I mean, there's I I had this other guy that I recruited <laughs> with pork chat. He came out there and, like, I don't know, I made him a sign or some shit, or he made his own sign. I can't remember. It's been, like, a month or two now. But, you know, this other motherfucker was out there, and it's kind of, it's kind of beside the point because, you know, like, the sign spoke for itself, and there's just random fucking people out there, and they're like, oh, yeah, I fucking hate income taxes. Fuck that shit. And they would just, you know, they, they might not be walking around with a sign or anything, but, you know, they would say shit. You, you know what you so. should have done? You, you know what you should have done there? Um, and, and I'm pretty sure that other guy is, is from right. New, New Hampshire as well. Uh, is You put the big boot on your head. What's that guy's name? <laughs> Ber Berman Supreme. Berman Supreme, right. Yeah. They, 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 I mean, because <laughs> he was just a weirdo, but he draw all kind of attention. <laughs> he... he this guy, this guy is my my good friend. Vermin I Supreme mean, is. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, I, I I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm his good friend, but well, like, he's, my he's, friend? He's, a, he's a pretty radical lefty. I don't care. Okay. I, I that's beside the point. I, I, this this guy. I I mean. I, <laughs> this guy is so freaking awesome. He gives so few fucks. Well, obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's right down my alley. Like, I, I don't know if he likes me, but I definitely like him. Yeah, that, he's, that, like, that, that, well, he's definitely lunatic, lunatic fringe there. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no. no. He, he's not a lunatic. He's just so... Like, like, certain people are just so smart that they say stuff and they can't help it like I don't know if I'm one of the, I don't know if I qualify for this but <laughs> they say like they say stuff that makes them sound insane and then you got, you, got <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I mean I do <laughs> you're you're one of them <laughs> yeah no and, I, I mean you know to uh Normies. The masses, exactly. I, I, I would sound you like know, a, an absolute say, lunatic as well. You say shit to normies, they freak out. No pun intended, but you know they they hear some of the shit and they're like, "Oh my god!" You know. <laughs> so, but you just gotta have you, you gotta fucking say it anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You gotta, you gotta fucking first amendment, second amendment, blah blah. blah. Yeah, that guy. Motherfuckers, supreme. So, so yeah, that so that happened. <laughs> I I met I I hung out with him on multiple occasions. He, he's a good guy. Uh, but yeah. but yeah, that's a good guy. All right. Then, but, so so anyway, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. What 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 what, uh, what was the uh, okay? So they put that bill out there. They were gonna they want to. Impose yep. income taxes upon you. You went out. You did your protest. Have mm -hmm. they have ha, have they have they voted on the bill yet? Uh, last I checked, the New Hampshire State House. Uh, oh, I want to say that I want to say they voted it down. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure the House, the, the New Hampshire <coughs> House, uh, voted that bill down, and then. Okay. I well, would, I I would think I would think if you're willing to, uh, I mean, it got you upset enough. 
to make the effort to go on the boards, set up some kind of a protest, go out to the streets, make signs, do a mm, protest. I was, I was fucking pissed. That, that I mean, you, that I would, I would imagine from that that you would keep track of what the hell's going on with the bill. I, I'm paying. I'm paying enough attention to. <laughs> I'm paying. I'm paying so much attention. So, so okay. This is a, a whole difference. If you want to get down to this other story, that's fine. But uh, I went to some screening for some movie. I was an extra in, in a movie, and Chris Sununu, governor of New Hampshire. All right. He was there. Okay. He, you know, he was like like the the big headline speaker for the freaking whatever. It, it's not a big, it's not a big deal. But I was I was in it, and but well, so I, I talked. <laughs> To Chris Sinudu in person, all right, just like just like anybody else, and I just walked up to him like a, like a regular voter or whatever, you know, nothing special. But I walked up to him and I mentioned that um, that that Bill, I I I, don't, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I, at the time I had it, the name of the bill written down on paper, and I was like looking at it in my head, whatever, and I'm like. Are you, are you going to vote yes or no on this? And he said, he said, um, he said, I can't vote yes, or something to that effect. He's like, I cannot vote yes. And it's, Well, he so, wouldn't vote. He would either veto or not. Right, yeah, whatever, whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> whatever political mumbo-jumbo that, that stands for, I don't, I don't even understand but <laughs> okay, well, let me ask you a question totally off topic. Go ahead. Your name is Ben, right? Yes. So what was Slim Jim Flim? When I was uh, a younger man, when I, when I was still living in my parents' house, uh, we had a mouse pad, and on this mouse pad. <laughs> Freaking Macho Man Randy Savage. Okay. That that was the mouse pad. <laughs> it said Slim Jim. Freaking Macho Man. Oh, 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 that's right. He was he did those commercials. <laughs> Sna snap into a Slim Jim. Snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, all right, and Flim just got added on there. Well, Flint, well that's not by accident. Um, so... Uh, what do you call it? No, I'm serious. I'm serious. That's just, okay, so, flim means a thing. So Means a thing? Yes. Well, so at some point, I, I added that in there. Uh, because flim is part of the word flim flam. You know that word? Sure, I know about flim flam men. Flim okay, so flim flam is a drum. I'm a drummer. I'm like I'm a pianist. No pun intended, but I'm, I'm a pianist, <laughs> and I, I'm also a drummer. All right. I got I got lots of drum drummer sticks. Well, I'm not trying to make sex jokes, but. Uh, flim flam. Flim flam is a. Uh, I can't even remember it. Anymore. I, 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 well, a flim, a flim flam man is a con artist. Yeah, that's not how I meant it, though. Uh, all right. No, I was just. Uh, uh, the only the only way that I met so flim when, when I said okay so I said slim Jim. As in Macho Man, fucking Randy, Randy Savage, and then I had uh, drumsticks hanging around, and so I was thinking about drum rudiments. And at the time, I didn't even know that that was any kind of scam shit or whatever. I was just like, oh yeah, I'm a drummer, and freaking Randy Savage. That was pretty much my my thinking. That serious. 
I don't fuck around. So did did you uh, or do you still watch professional wrestling? <laughs> I used to. I, not anymore. I don't, I don't even have a TV. Uh, all right. I'm uh, just wondering. I, I mean, I know a lot you of people. Watch, no, watch I, I, I don't. I don't watch that stuff now. But I, I know a lot of people are really into it. So. Uh, are are you, are you watching uh, chat? I'm watching I'm chat. Not, what about it? I'm I'm not, I'm not even watching chat. <laughs> I should go back. Well, it gets distracting sometimes, but... Uh, I know, right? Okay, well, let me ask you this. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not even watching chat. All right, tell, tell me about this girl. It's fun. Oh. Uh, I, I, really, I really can't tell you very much. Why not? What's her name? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no name? She has, yeah, she has one. No, I... Yeah. I'll, I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you the basics. Does, does, you, does she actually exist? Yes. Oh, definitely. And she's a human. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> see, I, I've, I've been watching you talk about her here in the chat for a while. Grimner, Grimner, I, Grimner. I, I assumed Grimner, Grimner. that you made her she, up. <laughs> no. Grimner. She she is a non okay. She exists, and I love her. I and, and it's all you really need to know. She she does not want to stop being an anon. You know what I mean? I think that's about all you need to know. Uh, but, all right, all right. But I guarantee, I guarantee you, she's she's not a fucking AI. But, I I I, I, she, I she's, she's she's not a figment of your imagination. No. And she's not made of plastic. No. <laughs> all right. Well, I no. figured it was I figured it was one of those two. <laughs> that's, that's that's all any of you need to fucking know about her. <laughs> all right. E- except except that I that, that I will defend her. Well, there's nothing to defend. We know nothing about her, so. Um, Good. <laughs> There's, you really can't need to defend something than somebody that nobody knows anything about. No, it's fine. It's fine. No, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, I'm not what you're gonna be worried about. I just, you know, say <laughs> you, you, right? Like, <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to worry about. All right, all right. Oh, but, oh my gosh, I, I I don't understand women. Nobody does. Um, nobody does. Don't don't, don't oh. even don't even try. You'll uh, just give you a headache, and and then you you'll wind up frustrated. And just uh, yeah, just don't. Uh. I just keep, all I all I do is I keep working. I just freaking keep in drinking. I know I shouldn't drink as much, but I keep working. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, no, <laughs> wait. Moose girl points out, and quite correctly. Men are not a walk in the park either. <laughs> oh no, we're not. You know what? I tell you one thing though. I got paid today. But 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 I got Moose fucking girl, paid today but and girl. yesterday. Well, let me let me just say, Moose Girl, we but, are easy to understand. We're very basic. There's, there's, we don't have a lot of wants or needs. <laughs> All right, I'm watching chat now because Moose Girl must be. You can't mix. Moose girl into into the the audio game. She she, I, she can hear you, but you couldn't hear her, or something like that. One of the ways somebody can't hear somebody. I, I forget yeah. which way it goes, but uh, so no, she she can't she can't jump in. Gotcha. Time That's all right. That's all right. Um. <laughs> oh, I have notes. Oh, I want to check my notes and see. Cause there's other stuff I want to talk. <clears throat> All right, well, hurry hold along, on. hurry along. Hold on, hold on. Uh, give me one second. Uh, letters, inc- so we, we talked about it. That's done. Income tax. Uh, by the way, uh, if you're not a hacker, then you should become a hacker and first learn, li- first learn Linux I mean, don't don't be an evil hacker like these fucking assholes. Are, they fucking Google. They're, they're 
you know, they're they're evil actually. But uh, you know, learn first and foremost, learn Linux slash Unix, and once you got that down pat, start using Vim. No, nobody's ever got it down pat. Right. Yeah. There, there, there's so much to learn within 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 the whole Linux there's, world. <laughs> there's a, a ton to learn, and I'm not going to do it except for learn Vim. Um, and if you can, what's learn 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 Vim. I was I was reading an article some guy wrote uh, today or yesterday. I forget which, and it says, "How long does it take to learn?" Web design. Oh my god! <laughs> he started Fuck. talking about all these people. Yeah, you go to, they go to these boot camps six weeks, and and they come out saying, "Yeah, I'm a web designer uh, now." Uh, <laughs> <good> god. <laughs> then he talked to somebody. And then, then, he talked, and then, and then those assholes get get hired. Yeah, you know, well, sure. And then then you, you talk to somebody they, that's they been doing job. it for like two years. And and they they realize they're not really quite the web designer yet, but they're they're learning, they're getting there. And you get somebody, fresh you know, six, fresh, seven, eight, ten years, and they've they've got fresh out of India, fresh out of India. What? Not be fresh, fresh off the boat from India. Oh well, I'm whatever. Not, I, I'm, not, I'm not being racist when I say that, but I mean, like you know, like you get there, you got these fucking eight hundred and twenty B's and motherfuckers out here. You know, they're taking my jobs. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, anyway, so so you get somebody, you know, whatever, six, seven, eight, ten years along, and, and they've got, you know, pretty much most of the, the the basics down and some advanced stuff, but uh, you never master what what, what whatever uh, programming language, uh, web design. I mean, web design is, uh, takes in so many various components. I mean, you're not just talking yeah. HTML, PHP, CSS, but you, you've also got That's to learn the Java, JavaScript, and, you got, mm. and then you've got to work out, oh, you yeah. know, so you say, become a hacker, master Unix, master Linux. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> no, you, you can't, because there's so much... Right, there's, there's it, so much it just doesn't, yeah, it can't happen. It's, it's not, I mean, you can't... I mean, I, you could be good. You could be really good, and and okay. every, everybody will come to you like you're a guru because you know some stuff. But but you know, there's like, got to be stuff you just you know, you don't have no clue, and you have to you have to look up just like anybody else. Like like think think of what what's his name? Uh, like Tim Berners Lee, the guy that invented the internet. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or what whatever is you, you know what I mean? Sure. Uh. <laughs> He can get, th th that guy can definitely get a job whenever he wants to. Well, <laughs> sure, you could you could learn enough about whatever specific thing to to get a job because people want to you know they want an expert in X, whatever whatever yeah. that may be, and you you can learn more than than most you know ninety percent of ninety five percent of the people know about a particular subject easy enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but but when it's you know when you're learning multiple disciplines and getting them all to work together, uh, that, that that's that's where that's where some of the some of the trouble. Yeah, is. It's, it's not it's not easy. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, I was I was gonna say. Uh, uh, well, there's your boyfriend. Who are you talking? About? I'm huh? not paying, I'm not I'm not watching. Uh, Fucking <laughs> Han, 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 Hans came into the chat. <laughs> Fucking goddamn! I don't give a fuck. Just for that, that you, I mean, I'm going to ignore ignore whatever is going on in the chat right now. I'm going to tell you something way more important. Um, so I've got um, seriously, I got this guy. Uh, hold, hold for one moment. Por favor, Senor Carl. Okay. Now, Carl. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now I got. I got. I got. I got. All right. That's good. We're all good. 
So this guy um, emails me earlier today, or like, I don't know, like a couple days ago, or whatever. Probably early today. And he's like, oh yeah, pro job, Boston. Eat your fucking heart out, Judge Dredd. Suck my dick. <laughs> Serious, seriously. Uh, and he, he wants to tell me that I'm going to be fucking homeless in fucking Boston. Fuck you, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, this guy is... So, all right, you got a pearl job that's available in Boston. Have you applied yeah. for it? Are you, are, I, are, I, are you thinking I, of I, moving... Are you thinking of moving to Boston? No. Okay. No, every time one of, the, one of, the, one of these shits happens... I tell them I'm not moving to Boston, and I, I've learned, you know, trial and park. You know, every time now though, I tell them I'm not. You know, I'll move right up to the border, but I'm not moving to. I'm not moving to Boston. The border, block, to mass. Ask to choose it. Not tax. <laughs> we call it tax to choose it. Oh, well. That's good. Tax, tax, juices. Yeah, yeah. You know. And whatever. So, <laughs> Moose girl. <laughs> so, so I mean, yeah. But I don't know. All right, it's man. Sure that, well, this ahead. is this has been an interesting conversation, but uh, I think we got to move on and maybe uh, call in another week and, and we talk about some more stuff. Let me wrap it up, though. All right. So, 10, 10, 20 seconds. So, I might work for this company. Don't know. Uh, not moving to Mass. Um, but this guy, this uh, recruiter is, and he seems legit. We'll, we'll see. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going on cruise ships. Go to, go to benhops.com to hear my music. B E N H O P P S dot com. P is in Paul. Uh, and you can also go to portchat.net. P O R C C H A T dot net. Same letter. And there you go. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, have a good night. Yeah. All righty, there you had it, Slim Jim Slim. Um, <laughs> interesting to talk to there. Um, uh, whatever. It's in there, you um, See this? Okay. Yeah. Skype is a weird thing. All right. Um. What the hell? All right, we're gonna go ahead and play some more music, Moose, and then uh, uh, we come back and then we'll. Talk about whatever we talk about. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, why, why is that on? That should not be on. All right, we're going to start off with uh, Simo here. Simo, not like see more stuff. Simo, S-I-M-O. <laughs> this is called Shine. Yeah, he's your friend, Rob motherfucking Zombie. That's right. Ging, gang, gong, they do gong, galaga, raga. <laughs> yeah, you, you almost have to sing when you say the name of that song, because it's just so lyrical. Anyway, before that, we had uh, Black Country Communion doing the cove there. You know, and it even showed Joe Bonamassa in that video, uh, which I, I found a, a slight, slightly kind of interesting. Um, but... Uh, there you go. Um, that's uh, Black Country Communion and Joe's on guitar. Anyway, we kicked it off with Simo doing Shine. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. Good set. Uh, well, I say that because I picked them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing. Um, that was hilarious. Um. I do applaud you, Slim Jim. 
or being the one man protester and some other guy. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I well, mean, I, and... I do, but as I've said on this show previously, that being one person and trying to make an example against it, <laughs> you mean government, it's not going to work. I mean, more power to you for getting out there and making the sign and being pissed off. I get it. I get that. That's oh, yeah. great. But, you know, I tried to be my one woman protester, too, when one person or whatever, when I tried to say, well, I'm not going to pay for my license plate tabs. Well, not paying for your license plate tabs is not the way to go about getting rid of the issue. I found out. It only cost me, in the end, it cost me $700, right? You know? Right. So, doing that wasn't the way to go about it. And I was dumb. I admit it. You know, that wasn't the right way to go about it. The right way to go about it is to, you know, do it like Hal. When you, if you listen to Hal on Sundays, he'll give you information and tell you how you need to go about getting rid of something that's within the government that you think is wrong. Uh, right. You know, yeah, like, you just can't be that one person walking no. into a place and, and singing a few bars of Alice's Restaurant. It, 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 right. People just look at you like you're nuts, and and and, and right. it, it and just like, doesn't oh, work. Then they'll deal with you like the way they deal with one person. It's not pretty. They, you're lucky if they don't beat the shit out of you or kill you. You know, being one person because right. you're only one person. You know what I mean? They do it all the time. But you have to have there's power in numbers. I mean, that, that's true. What yeah, kind of, yeah. You may still have fun doing it, but. Right. It, it, it doesn't that didn't get your goal. Doesn't attain your goal. <laughs> exactly. You know, and I was thinking I was some badass. Oh, I'm not. I'm just not going to pay for my sticker. I'm not going to pay the eighty five dollars. And then, then guess what? I started getting pulled over all the time by the Eau Claire City cops. Yeah. You know. Then, then you got to pay a lot let more. They only go so long before they. They only let you go so long past the expiration date. Right. You know what I mean? So instead of 85, you're paying a couple 300 and... No, Vinny, you're correct. You are a one-man, one person, but you are not just solo. We, when you go to around, though, you have people around you that are on the same page as you. You're a one-man band. What you are doing is correct. You are one person. I get that. But you also... You network, which you know that you have to do, and so you know people, and you you're the kind of person that can get to know people, and you can you know put yourself there and meet these people and get to know them, and so you're not at that point when you're there at those in those situations you're not one person, you're a group, you're in a group of people is what I'm trying to say. Correct? Sounds like to me. <laughs> right. So, yes, you are on your own, then, but when you go to these things that you cover, you you hook up with the other people that are there supporting the cause. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, at that point, you're not alone, you know? Right. That makes sense. Makes sense to me. I mean, to me... It comes down to simple things. There's power in numbers. Okay, how long have you heard that statement? That is a true statement. There is power in numbers. Okay. Period. Knowledge is power. How long have you heard that statement? Seems Throughout like your whole life, right? Yeah. It's true. Knowledge is fucking power. There is no doubt. Yeah. I, I, I don't like to be like, um, feel like I'm better than anybody. I don't, I purposely don't do that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I do have a tendency to judge people that don't think for themselves and don't, and, you know, don't do research and don't fucking, you know, it's hard to explain. No, it's not really, I mean, you know, uh, people that just, just take what they're handed uh, informationally and accept right. it, and then go out there and parrot it out as if they uh, figured something out when it was just somebody else giving the information. 
without actually looking at it, without analyzing it, without uh, yep. breaking it down and using some critical thinking, those people exactly. suck. But but that's yeah, most people. Well, yep. that, that, they, they suck, but that's most people. And most people haven't been taught how to critically think. That's part of the problem is that they've just been taught with but, their whole life. Now, tell me this. Take, we're, take what's fed forth on their throats and just <laughs> be good with it. But, but tell me, were, were you taught how to critically think, or you, you just... Yes, because my, my dad was a huge reader, and I was a ferocious reader when I was, like, up to, like, 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade. I read, like, a scene. And I had a college-level vocabulary when I was in 6th grade. Okay. Because I was a voracious reader, and I got that from my parents. All right. You know what I mean? I got that from one of my parents. You know what I mean? And and what were you reading? Novels. Okay. But novels like big novels. <laughs> when I was in sixth grade. I mean, I had a college level vocabulary when I was in sixth grade. All right. All right. So I know. But I, I you know, my upbringing was it, what it was. But I, I, what were you at? What was the question again? I would just ask what you were reading, what kind of stuff. You said novels, but, like, right. uh, you know. But I was, I read, like, Lady Chatterley's Lover when I was, like, in sixth grade. You little perv. Somewhere between sixth and seventh grade, I probably read that book. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, Beverly Cleary, that was, like, in third grade, Ben. <laughs> ben Wah. I mean, come <laughs> on. Everyone read Beverly Cleary books. <laughs> I never even heard of her. <laughs> but it was, well, you're trying to, you're, you you got a little bit of an age on me, a little, only about like two years, but. Yeah, no, I didn't read that. Whatever that is, I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, you know what I know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but, the interesting thing that I found, when I think back to my high school days, whatever, we never had all this shooting shit, for one thing. Not, and I don't even want to go into that subject right now. But it was different because when I was in high school, we were into drinking, like tiger parties and weed and smoking cigarettes. Uh-huh. That's what we, in my high school, okay, and having parties, like outdoor parties. We had like outdoor parties. Right. We'd like pick a spot, there'd be a party. Like where we'd go around, someone would buy a keg, we'd go there, we'd fucking party. You know what I mean? Okay. Nowadays, they don't do that now. Maybe they do, but it's very hard to get away with. Like, we used to be able to pretend we were of age to buy alcohol, and we'd get away with it. Even sure. though I knew a couple of times for sure, then people knew we were underage. Right. Uh, don't want to us. They knew. <laughs> you know? Yeah. This is back in, like, the 80s, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, used, I, used to, I used to buy people beer all the time when I was 16. Yeah. Well, like, see? That's what I'm talking about. Like... It's just not that way it is anymore, girl. It's not that way anymore. I mean, it still happens, but not like it did when we were younger. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like we would drink and drive all the time. I mean, or oh, I, I was riding with someone that was drinking and driving. It's like, yeah. it was like, you think back and you're like, oh, my fucking God. You know what I mean? I know. I know. I, I you think back and you're like, oh, my fucking God. I, 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 I remember one time leaving a place. Uh, after partying there all night, on, yeah. on, on my little, I had, I had a little, uh, it was a Honda 250 motorcycle. Yeah. And I, so I remember leaving there and pulling up to a stoplight. And the next thing I remember is waking up in my bed the next morning, and that, that was a good 20 miles from my house. <laughs> so wow. somehow, out. Some, well, I, 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 I would, or whatever. I, 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 I. I I somehow made it uh, home in. Yeah, I, I've no, had those moments too. Abs absolutely no I, memory lie, of that trip. <laughs> not recently, but when I was younger, yes, that has happened to me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yes, I wow, admit it. How, how did I, I get here? There, I mean, it, you know, we were dumb. I was dumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, it, nowadays, like, it's different. I mean, 
like I've told the boys so many times, I'm like, I'm not against partying because I love to party and get drunk, you know, drink beer and get drunk, you know what I mean? Right. But that doesn't mean I'm going to fucking be dumb about it. You Absolutely, know? right, gonna, right. I'm going to fucking, I'm not going to drink and drive. Like, I've made that decision for myself, and I have to sit by it, you know, because you can't make that, that can't be a half-assed decision. No. You either do it or you don't. Absolutely. And I've chosen not to, you know, for obvious reasons, because for one thing, the biggest reason is stupid to do it. It makes no sense, and why do it? I agree. So I take cabs and make arrangements, so I do not, I'm not very drunk, okay? Sure. But, so I told the boys all along, I'm like, if you're going to party, yeah, it's great, man. Go party. Everyone likes to fucking party, you know, however you're doing it, whatever, you know, but don't be dumb. Make a plan. You know, yeah. if, if I'm going to go out drinking, I make sure that I got the money in my pocket to pay for the cab there and for the cab back. Yeah. Hmm. However much money it might cost me, I make sure I, I keep that money separate from my fucking other money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I make sure that I got cab money to get home. And I do not, I would, the last thing I would want to do is drive my car to a bar and leave. You know oh, what I mean? Right, sure, sure. So I always take a fucking cab there and a cab back. That's the way, you know, that's, that's easier, that's better. Yeah. I mean, you have to be smart about it. I'm all, you know, if we're going to party or whatever, you just, it's great to fucking party, but to get wasted to the point that you can't fucking function, you know, and there's no way you should be behind the wheel of a vehicle at that point, you know. <laughs> no. I no. mean, you're better off. Like, that's why I like to go to music festivals, because if I have to, I can just fucking crawl to my tent. You know what I mean? I know yeah. I'm not leaving there. I'm not driving to another location. I don't have to worry about getting to another location because everything's right there, right? Exactly. I may have to walk through a field or something, but, you know, hey. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's better than driving. Drunk. Uh, no doubt about you know? it. <laughs> so, and, you know, we're, it's good they were talking about this on St. Kennedy's Day because, like, the cops, man, they're not dumb, right? Yeah. Like, they set up checkpoints and stuff like that, and they ramp up. They, they put in overtime for certain holidays in certain weeks of the year. So St. Penny's Day is a big one. New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve is a big one. Right. All the whole entire holiday season, they ramp up. Their oh, yeah, they do, they do it on, on, on all of them. It they don't do, matter. They do them over, mandatory overtime. You know, Memorial Day, July 4th. Uh, right. They even all do it on the, Thanksgiving. Th th thanks yeah, for giving. Thanksgiving. During, well, that's what's the the holidays, bro. Oh, well, I know, but it's like, who drinks right. on Thanksgiving? I mean, you, you go drink the on whole, Thanksgiving? Oh, you'd be surprised how many people drink on Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, people, it's a family thing, so people have to drink sometimes. Well, Christmas, they I, I could understand drinking on Christmas, but yeah. You know what I mean? Like, same with Christmas. Like, some people, the only way they can get through it is if they're fucking drinking. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I've been there. I think I'm one of them people. <laughs> they, they don't, <laughs> you know? I don't know if they do, like, they do it for Easter. They do it for Easter. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. They, whatever, any holiday, dude. They're people, like, oh, people, someone took people, me drinking. Is, is Easter... Someone might have busted up the wine at Easter dinner. Someone got a little too tipsy at Easter dinner. You bet. <laughs> you know, they might have busted up some wine at Easter dinner. How about Flag Day? Arbor any, Day? Any, well, those are the minor holidays. No, it's just Ar they're, Ar they're always out there any day. Arbor but Day, the, you're out there drinking with the trees. They ramp it up during certain times. <laughs> but that's that's not my worry, because I already decided I do not drink and drive. Yeah. But that that doesn't matter. I make sure my license plates are, tabs are up to date. I make sure all my headlights are working and my brake lights and everything. Yeah. You know, you have to make, make it so you won't be harassed by them. You can't drive dirty. That's dumb. Don't drive without an expired license. Don't drive with an expired license. Don't drive with a suspended license. Um, make sure you have insurance. Make sure you have your your license fees and everything paid. Mm -hmm. You know, that's this is how to avoid harassment. Like, before Slim Jim Flim came on, he said he was talking about how to not get shot, that he's good at not getting shot because it's never happened to him. Well, I'm in that club too, buddy. <laughs> well, I, I, I would hasten to guess I've that... I've never shot somebody or been shot yet. I, 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 would. I, I, I would hasten to guess that everybody here in this chat has not been shot. 
I have never been shot in my life by a gun. Never. I've had guns pointed at my head. I never even had that. Yeah. So I'm not going to have one again. No. <laughs> but, but I didn't get shot. <laughs> That's a good thing, Grim. Glad to hear that. No, I remember I was in uh, Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Oh, God. Me and a buddy of mine were coming back from Canada. And it's raining driving through Portland. It's Friday night. I don't, I don't remember. Pouring rain or just pour, pour, rain. pouring rain? Pouring rain. Okay. And I'm driving along and and, uh, and I, I pull up to a stoplight and, and then I, I see but behind me there's a, a, a cop car with with a, with a light like. It wasn't actually a cop car. It was a car with a light on the dashboard. You know how they put those up there in the regular cars. Yeah. And apparently the guy had been following me for a while. I never saw him. Um, at least that's his story. He says, "Oh, we followed you for through like three blocks." Anyway, all these cop cars pulled up around me. And all these pigs got out, and they all had guns pointed at my face. <laughs> oh God, that's gonna be fucking. Oh my God, did you <laughs> see like, his hat? No, <laughs> no, I was like. <laughs> What, what do you want? What the hell do you guys want? Oh, my God. And, and, and they said, well, we've been following you for three weeks. Or, I mean, three, three oh blocks. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, well, I didn't see it. I'd be like, what? You know, you had all this rain here and crap in your oh, shitty, oh my God. Your shitty town. And anyway, they just checked by papers, you know, driver's license yeah, registration. No papers. And they, they didn't check insurance back then, which was a good thing, because I didn't have any. I was only, like, 17. Right. Yeah, good thing. Uh, See, back then, they didn't check that. I, I was only 17, so. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Back then, they didn't check that. They, yeah. They, so, uh, anyway, it so. It was a law back then, so you didn't have to legally have insurance back then. You I don't, could if you wanted to. I don't to. know. California, I don't think you did, but well, maybe, maybe. Oh, maybe it was mandatory. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway, so they, they just. You know, harassed me for a little while, asking stupid questions, and then I left Portland. <laughs> Good idea. I didn't stay there. Good idea. <laughs> I was like, you I'm going to... 17? Yeah, I was going to find, you know, we were going to find a place to, you know, a hotel or whatever wow. to hang out. But no, wow. no, no, not this town. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I don't blame you there. Yeah, fucking pigs, man. It was just like, where are you oh, pointing yeah, guns at me? What's, what's, what's up with you guys? Yeah, no, they didn't. They, they, it didn't really freak me out. I don't know why. Uh, they good. Just, just no, that's dead. good. Yep. I mean, nothing. Nothing really does, though. <laughs> I don't know. Right. That's the thing too. Is you gotta know what to do in certain situations. You gotta maintain your cool. You can't be all fucking. Uh, I, just, I just don't freak out over stuff. I, I don't know. Right. That's good. That's a good thing. That's a good quality. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Yeah, whatever it is, what it is. <laughs> anyway, um, let's play another set, and then because Vinny wants to call in and give us an update on stuff. Yeah, people are chomping at the bit to hear Vinny. Oh, I know. Vinny is the hey, star. Also, Chloe are going insane here. They want to hear Vinny's voice. I, I know. He's, he's a star. He's he's yeah, like... So, uh, you know, I do too, star. Vinny, but some people are just huge fans. Like, they're fucking, like, what do they call it? Groupies? Groupies, yeah. Vin, Vinny groupies. Yeah, yeah. The groupies want to hear Vinny. <laughs> so, let's, let's do that. We'll All right. Back. We'll, we'll do that. As soon as, we, as soon as we get back here from this set, we'll, we'll get the Vinny call in going on for y'all. Uh, anyway, we're going to start out... Now this This first video I'm going to play... Interesting little piece. I'm not even going to tell you about it. You just watch and, and let, love it, is what I'm going to say. I, I, I really enjoyed this video. <laughs> All right, I played that on a dare. Yes. Cirque, Cirque dared me to play that. <laughs> it's the Red Army Choir with Bella Chow. Uh, <laughs> before that, uh, John Five doing uh, Michael Jackson's Beat It. Now, for those of you, I, I've been playing some John Five over the recent weeks here, months, uh, and maybe you don't know who John Five is, but you do know who John Five is. Because, uh, let me tell you, John Five, 
He he played with David Lee Roth back in the day, and then he dumped David Lee Roth, and he went and he played in the Marilyn Manson band. That's right, he was with Marilyn Manson, and he he tore it up over there. And now he's the guitarist for Rob Zombie, but he also does his own stuff. Uh, so John Five doing beat it, uh, uh, excellent excellent guitarist there. And we kicked it off. If you didn't like that first video. If you didn't love that first video, then there's something wrong with you. It's Billy Gibbons and John Fogarty in a studio there, kind of doing a little battling uh, between their various songs, ZZ Top songs, that. Creedence songs. And, uh, that video is just a freaking kick, man. I uh, love that video. Uh, John Fogarty <laughs> and freaking ZZ Top is like, yeah. Yeah, yeah just, <laughs> just Billy, just Billy Gibbons, but, you know. Oh, yeah, Billy Gibbons, right. Sorry. <laughs> and whoever the rest of is uh, with John Fogarty now. Um, uh, you know, and, and kicking it in the studio there. They're just having a good old time playing off of each other. It, right. it, it, it was really cool. Um, anyway, so I dug that video. <laughs> yeah, we, um, there seems to be a lot of, for some of the people in the chat, it seems to be quite an obsession being played. Yeah. Sex bots. Sex bots. I know we've talked about this before on Freakers, but I just want to, like, reinforce, like, or not reinforce, but revisit it a little bit. Like, I'm just hoping that someone that's making these so-called sex bots is thinking ahead and thinking, like, all the different things. It would be like buying a new car, right? Right. You can get things added on. Like, you can, it, you can customize a sex bot. Like, that's the way, only way it's going to be, like, going to work for people that they can actually customize their own sex box. Sure. Like, buy a car and adding on accessories, you know what I mean? Sure. And so, I mean, there should be a male and female sex box, right? We're not just making female ones the whole time. Right? Uh, sure, why not? I mean, because women need sex, too. I mean, come Absolutely. On. You know, we need sex, too. Men aren't the only one that, like, needs to have sex. No, no, of course not. I mean, women like to have sex, too. It's a gender, <laughs> you know, both genders like to have sex. You know, let's just keep that in mind. Well, I would hope so. You know, yeah, you know, and, and for the guys out there that only care about themselves when it comes to sex, like, if you really want to be, like, good, you need to give a little bit. You can't just, like, be, like, oh, oh you know, a moron. Right, right. Oh, so you have to know what the fuck you're doing. I'm just saying. You know, otherwise your woman or whatever ain't gonna be satisfied. I'm just saying. Right. Ain't gonna be satisfied. Just you know, put that out there. Couple advice. Take time to know, and you will be rewarded. Okay. <laughs> sure. Take this from a woman. I'm 51. I know what I'm talking about. She knows. She's been there. It's not her first rodeo. No, it is not. <laughs> anyway, um, we should let Vinny call in, give him like he can get. Yeah, let's do that. You maybe, know, let's uh, go. Home. <laughs> yeah. You can get me like. Try, you know, get like. I was trying to like, you know, put a cushion in between. No, no, I understand. I understand. Sex spot, you know, I was like, okay. Well, <laughs> hey, everybody needs sex spot information. <laughs> Everyone should have it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm hoping that they're customizable. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you're going to make sex spots, they're going to be male and female versions, and then you can, like, tick the skin tone, you know, and breast size, dick size, <laughs> that type of thing. Well, what, you know? what, whatever works, whatever trips you trigger. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. All right, so, okay, I will mute now and listen to Vinny. All right, well, we'll, you'll, we'll try and buzz him up here. Let me, let me listen to him. Let's see if he answers. Uh we got to try and get him on, on the line here, Mr. Vincent Easley. It's ringing, 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 ringing. I, th I think he's here. You here? Yeah, I, I don't know if that, yeah, can you hear me? I yeah, don't know if that yeah, cut yeah, my player off or not. Okay, you got 20 minutes. Hopefully. You got 20 minutes. Okay. Keep it tight. <clears throat> All right, so I'm okay there. My player stopped and audio's good. Yeah, audio's good. Like I said, you got 20 minutes. Go. Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> All right. I'm walking down the steps here. Uh, so we'll start off with the uh, um, 
Where did I leave off at anyway uh, last time I talked? I, I don't remember if I filled in about uh, my encounter with the uh, the FBI and the uh, U.S. Marshals and um, the district attorney in Denver. I don't uh, believe I, don't I was know. Just, caught just up on that. Just tell us a story. All right. Well, as you all know, I went to Denver um, as an investigative reporter. I, I'd call that really my first uh, First one I could put that title on there. Uh, and I didn't know anything about Bruce Doucette. Uh, I had heard in the past about these grand juries. Um, uh, common common law courts had been formed. So uh, this has gone about some several states. And it uh, been a few convictions and uh, some plea deals there in Denver. Uh, Bruce was uh, convicted this last uh, Friday and uh, probably going to Get a, a whole lot of years. Some of the couple of the other guys before him had got uh, 26 years, and the other one much more than that. Uh, the day that Bruce Doucette was convicted, I uh, family had come out of uh, a courtroom there where two men were tried for the, the robbery and murder of, of their brother and family member, and uh, he got uh, 50 something years, I believe. The, the guy with the trigger man and the other guy got 26 years. So this is uh, comparative to uh, how this system works. Uh, when I when I first arrived to the courtroom, uh, oh, it was such a cold, 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 uh, windy day. We drove all night into uh, uh, over the Vail Pass there and into the Denver for courtroom, which was a uh, mid trial. I thought it was just starting, but I, like I said, I didn't know anything about Bruce Doucette before I headed out. I spent a couple of days uh, in the courtroom and uh, watched the man. I watched his body language. I uh, I watched all the uh, the people there, the jurors, the judge, the court reporter, um, and most especially how, how the, it was working. You know, I, I'm a novice to these court things. Uh, some people like Maxine Bernstein have, have been to uh, untold numbers of these. Um, but, but I wanted to see how it worked, and I wanted to give my announcement that here I am. So I, I handle my laminated piece of paper, reallibertymedia.com, Vincent Easley the second reporting. <laughs> I, I laugh because my trolls say I was claiming to be a reporter, this and that. You guys may uh, recall that. So anyways, uh, the next day... Tuesday, after uh, they found out who I, who I am, they looked in to see who I was, I guess. And uh, so this uh, uh, robber, or Robert, I guess his name is, Shapiro, the, uh, the prosecutor for the Denver District Court against Bruce, Bruce Doucette, he, uh, he turns and looks at me, tries to stare me down. Uh, looks like a fat, pompous uh, Benny Rooster. You know, okay. and and uh, he's disgusting. Uh, comes along. I'll skip ahead till Friday, and uh, so the robber Robert uh, Shapiro and uh, the FBI. Now he's also in the courtroom, but he's also the leading the investigation on this. And he calls himself, I think, it was an advisory witness, where he can sit there in the courtroom and. Uh, it, it came to, to where he was, you know, his testimony was preempting what Bruce Doucette would have to say. And what we have is is the the organization here um, of this corporation, which many, many of, of uh, uh, so many important issues were brought to bear. And it was in state court, right, or the, the district court, that is, I'm sorry, uh, as opposed to federal. And I was able to talk to this agent English. He's an FBI guy the advisory witness, the lead prosecutor, how, how do they wear these hats in this courtroom? It is ridiculous. How they uh, gave the jury instructions to the jury, they had no choice but to vote for conviction. It's it's a terrible crime. I'm going to tell you about this man, Robert, the Robert Shapiro District Attorney, Denver District Court. All they, they were all sitting out there on the bench Friday. The uh, jury had the uh, had it in their hands. It was on for them to um, decide. And I watched some of the jurors, and they watched me. Uh, I was uh, kind of a 
curiosity, you know, because, uh, well, <laughs> y'all might imagine me and my personality. And so anyways, they were all sitting out on this bench and I say, I walk by and uh, I'm uh, following along with this uh, one lady there that uh, really, really cool, cool lady. Uh, anyways, um, I go, wow, what kind of reporter am I? I you know, if I don't get a picture of these guys out there. So I go all the way back down and I go, and there, this one chick with, had been in the courtroom, probably a, an aide or a, a legal uh, or a law student or something or, or a combination of the both. So she's blocking, you know, she's in front of him. I say, hey, uh, I'd like to get a picture. If you uh, would prefer to be out of the picture, you could back up, you know. Uh, long story short is uh, they didn't want their picture t- taken. And uh, English says to me, uh, Ryan English is his name, uh, he says that if I start taking pictures, they would just go inside. I said, really? He said, yes. I said, well, I'll see you guys inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It, it, this was had to be so choreographed. As soon as I raised my phone up to take pictures, they do this quick change of uh, duck. The uh, Shapiro, he ducks his head behind the U.S. Marshal. He turns ducks his head with his hat covering his face, grabbing his bag. The one chick that uh, was the aide or the uh, student, uh, she hangs her head down, lets her her hair cover her face, and goes to looking at her phone. The girl behind her, her name's Wart, and and Byrne is the name of the U.S. Marshal appointed uh, from the the uh, uh, Denver County Sheriff's Department to the case. <laughs> the, the, it was so funny. It's how evil hides its face. I've got to ask, I've got to ask, why, why, if you're a public official, why do you want your face hidden? Um, is it because of your evil deeds? Is it like the Gestapo? Is it, is it secret police? Uh, when, no matter how, whether right or wrong, but when challenging an authority, and you deny that challenge by your authority, then I'd say it's not a fair shake. Bruce Doucette was set up. Uh, it was it was slaughter in there. And Wart, um, on the prosecution, uh, Mrs. Wart, I could never get them to even tell me how to spell it or what her first name was. They're, they're really hiding. Uh, there was a uh, undercover Mississippi cop. Uh, looked like, a, you know, he just, he, he probably took pleasure and the deception and uh, I, I can imagine he would be the guy in there in the, in the room doing torture and not have any problem with it you know right. you know, waterboarding and all that stuff it's really evil people the judge <clears throat> when Bruce said and I wish I had it to read uh, he was had English on the stand this special witness that gets to sit in the courtroom uh, I don't understand it so anyways, uh, uh, trying to get him to, to uh, read his oath, and uh, it's a pretty amazing oath, you know, and, and Bruce Doucette, from what I learned of him, is a pretty amazing man. I spoke with uh, many people that, that knew him, and uh, a couple of that I know personally that know him, uh, and, and just the things he's done in life and the people he's helped, his heart is revealed that, you know, he is a good man, Um Challenging, taking it in the wrong fashion. Uh, I, I know that Hal Anthony has spoke to this grand jury some years ago, or, or, or some of those members. I'm pretty sure I bet anyways. But anyway, so after I take the picture and, and they're all walking off, I got a couple of shots at them. I haven't published them yet. I was holding on to them. <clears throat> I'll probably do that soon. But anyways, uh, the uh, Shapiro, the robber, Robert Shapiro, he says to the others, he's harassing us. Um, these are some of the charges, multiple charges piled upon Bruce Doucette, you know, harassing a public official. And, uh, you know, the big ones were the uh, Colorado Organized, organized uh, Crime Act and conspiracy. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to walk back upstairs for a drink. Um, 
a conviction, so you're going to be leaving him for the rest of his life in prison. And, uh, really, really too bad. So, uh, yeah, as soon as I've been harassing him, uh, which, you know, would be, could be construed for, you know, certainly a uh, um, felony uh, act or something there, uh, to federal charges. Very, very disturbing that this, uh, this pompous cock, little Danny Rooster man, fat man, he's not little, he's a, he just looks like a puffed up Danny. Hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyways, <clears throat> using that position of authority. Uh, oh, and so when I go back into the courtroom for reading a verdict <clears throat> and the judge is giving the jury their instructions, which says uh, you have to convict this man, no, make no consideration of what it was he was doing and why he was doing what he is doing <clears throat> and challenging this court's authority. By this court's authority, um, you have to uh, follow our directions and Basically, you know, find them guilty. Right. That's what and they that's, always do. Yeah, I, I skipped over there where he tore. Yeah, yeah exactly. They, they always, they I, always I skipped over that. where he Go ahead. They, they always do that. They always say you, you have to follow the instructions and you have to uh, <clears throat> listen to whatever law as it is written or as we give it to you. Uh, and, yes, and, exactly. and you basically that's have to thing. ignore the facts and follow what we tell you. That's what they tell you when you go to be on a jury. Yep. Uh, I, I skipped skipped over, glazed over when I was talking about the when uh, Bruce was trying to get his oath read in court, and the judge he finally he's like he's all like we don't want to waste two minutes of the jury's time reading this. They've been held quite long enough, and and uh, it's like he tore a literal mask off because he was like this benign, uh, benevolent, uh, kind and uh, uh, very attentive and, and helpful man up there. Um, but if he tore that, he tore that face off, that, that mask, off, and it revealed his true face. And it was such ugly, horrid evil that was revealed, just like the rest of them. I'm going to say about English, he, uh, I, I used his own technique against him. He, he says he used uh, the technique on Bruce, knowing he'd want to talk and let him talk. I knew that man after I dressed him in court. And this is why I took it face to face. I had their attention and they looked and listened to me when I told them that this is the first time in history that we have the opportunity to come face to face and discuss this system that we're in the way that truth is or these ideas and notions that people have to be held as truth and be able to challenge that and discuss this face to face. And when I said to them, uh, when we come, it was our first response is, is death. And then, you know, I'm talking about their, their system they're involved in. Well, that, then I, they all kind of just, well, at first were like looking and listening. When I said that, they all settled in to listen. And then I went on to tell them how, you know, we're in the progression of mankind. We're addressing these uh, ideas uh, and calling the challenge. And I said, there's going to be some bumps in the road along the way. So, Lucy, to say one man cannot make the difference in protest, uh, I've got to disagree because, you know, I took it straight to their face. They responded to me. And then when they were reading the jury instructions in that Shapiro, the robber, Robert Shapiro, turned and stared me down, stomped, spun in his chair, and, and stared me down. The judge is saying if uh, any of the jurors didn't want to speak with anybody, let's let him know and he'd take care of that. And so these big, huge, two big old huge uh, deputies in there, one of them, he's like, turn around, staring me down. Now, I, I'm not afraid. You don't intimidate me, you pompous cop. You. Um, right. But, you know, of I, course, uh, when, when, when Moose Girl was talking about uh, a one-person protest, she's talking about a different situation than you are, like with, with what Slim Jim Flynn was trying to do, trying to get a, a, a state bill overturned, <clears throat> and then and just one person talking about it isn't going to be the same situation as what you're dealing with there. Well, I got to disagree. I think... Uh... I think each man or woman stand matters, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you don't have to go 
face off these uh, evil uh, people in, in their own, you know, courtroom. You don't have to go to a, a pro- protest with a sign. Uh, it, you know, your statement is your stand. So how you live your life, and that's, that's how we make the change, uh, not by, by telling, but by doing. Not by claiming, but by doing. So it's very important, I think, that we all start taking a stand in whatever manner you can. You know, don't take it to where you can't win. Uh, you know, don't don't throw down that gauntlet right there uh, in an ultimatum where you know you have to to suffer loss of your your life for liberty. Uh, yeah. Take the challenge to them. Um, let's see. I was going to say, oh yes, the. So I've been. It was called the uh, FBI agent or um, or informant. I wasn't very clear on that, but I heard it as agent. Anyway, uh, big big dissension uh, going on. Uh, Brand Thornton and I, the, the man that closed the show far, he's the one who gave me a call after I came back in from 28 days in the desert, and he says, "Go to Denver." I said, "Let's go." I said, "Who is this fellow?" He said, "I'll tell you on the way." Uh, I, I looked, uh, I spent a couple of days in court, a couple of, well, three days, two days in between when Phil and Will stayed in. And uh, so I, I was staying at, at Bruce's and Kim, his wife's house. And some guy big in the movement says that Brandon and I are uh, FBI agents. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But I, I hold my integrity. Um, you know, I said I would have snooped through her things and, uh, so this again, and I've spoken with Kim, and uh, I not only did I not, you know, uh, snoop through anything, I didn't even as much as read the page on an open notebook laid on the table, and I stand by my integrity, and um, that I, I did a, a video when we first got back in because I found about found out about it on the trip back in. Um, so, but I'll stand for this too. Is Brand Thornton? Uh, I have complete faith in him. Uh, I, on the way up, we, we stayed up in his brothers in Cedar City and um, stayed over the day, went to church with uh, with his brother there. Uh, on, I met his son, met his son down here in Vegas, you know. I, I've known him there from the courthouse during the Bundy trial. And, you know, I would stay in here just a little bit. I didn't end up going back to Arkansas, as you all know, so uh, how I am and plans and all of that stuff. Uh, anyways, uh, I've uh, had enough. Uh, and <laughs> he misconstrues the word intimate time with him, but I, I you know, uh, you know, see him interacting, uh, hear him talking, uh, uh, all this and that, um, and meeting his family, for, and just uh, you know, really being a judge because not only have I been a witness, a reporter, uh, also a juror, a judge, and a prosecutor, and I bring charges against crimes in the state. I gave you notice. And this is further notice that you all are charged. Uh, even if you did want to try to talk to me, Ryan, and uh, got shut down, didn't you? Oh, boy, boy, boy. Yeah, man, his well, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask a question before we run out of time here. Um, mm-hmm. Ryan Bundy. Yeah, no, I was talking about Ryan English, actually. No, no, Go no, ahead, no, Ryan I know. Bundy. But I'm asking you a question about Ryan Bundy. Uh huh. He's running for governor. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I saw some tweets about it there. Uh, and yeah. I was like, yeah. Really? He's running for governor? <laughs> it, it's a good platform, of course, to speak on these issues. But um, I don't think anybody would really think he will win. But uh, you know, he's uh, had seems to have the hand of providence. Uh, with him all along, so if he did win governor, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be surprised. Um, I wouldn't. I don't know that I'd go to to the predictions for uh, setting that as record yet. Yeah. But I got to remember yeah. right. I don't even know when they run for governor actually. So. Yeah. All right, man. Well, listen, um, we're, we're... last thing, last thing, and I'm signing off, and I appreciate you, Grimmer, and uh, everybody listening along. Uh, this, this thing on grand juries is really blowing up, and uh, um, people in other states are signing sure. and these liens and arrest warrants. And uh, Ryan Bundy is one, uh, among one of those that has here in Nevada. So this could really be 
this is my prediction here is uh, that this could be a really bad thing uh, and take out a lot of leaders in this patriot, so-called patriot movement. Uh, by the way, I'm not a part of anything. I stand separately and alone uh, through all. And I stand as witness, continue to witness the crimes of the state. So with that, I'll bid you all adieu, bon way, and uh, all those other words for what Alvita say. You remember <laughs> the bubble man. All right. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, man. All right. Peace, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. There you have it. Vincent Easley. All right. We got a few songs here to uh, close it out. And uh, you'll appreciate these being uh, St. Patty's Day tomorrow. Well, it's first two. Uh, anyway, so uh, here you go. William Elkington uh, covering uh, Black Betty on his banjo there. Before that, we had uh, the Dropkick Murphys. Kiss me. I'm shit faced. <laughs> and we kicked it off with Ale Storm and Drink. Ah, <laughs> oh, good stuff there. Good stuff. And I think we're done. I think we are. Unless you got anything else. We are. All right, well, tomorrow you got the dork table at noon uh, with Grammy yep. and uh, Flash Droid. Don't miss that. Great show, two-hour show there. And I'll be on Sunday at the noon Eastern as well with the blues, and we'll be playing some trivia here in the chat, followed by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. And then on later into the evening, Gary L. and uh, Gigi's Boo going down the road less traveled. We'll be back next Friday. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, happy, thanks. Happy, yeah, happy St. Patty's Day. Thanks, Slim Jim Flim, and thanks to Vin E. Thank you, Slim Jim and Vinny, for calling in. You guys are, you guys are who you are. I love you guys both. Absolutely. So, yeah. Peace. Peace.